speed, strength, perseverance. This is a story of unmatched excitement, but also the crude reality of extinction. This is a frontier of conservation. My name is Michael. After traveling to over 40 countries, 2021 has been a turning point. This year, a short notice career break gave me the opportunity to jump on a last minute flight to a childhood dream of mine, Africa. As a kid, I used to be a big animal nerd, spending evenings watching National Geographic and the weekends in my local zoo. This time, I had a rare opportunity to explore a truly untamed and wild continent all by myself. Welcome to my adventure in Kenya, and welcome to Michael Wonder World. Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more adventures. So day four on safari. Where are we going today? Is it? To Opajeta. Opajeta. What can we find in Opajeta? That's in the UK. Oh, wonderful. We have to see chimpanzees. Yeah, chimpanzees. Rhinos. And rhinos, they have really rare rhinos, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's a wonderful place. Yeah, it's a private reserve, right? It's not a national park. Yes, yes, it is. It is a private reserve. And because of that, we can probably do a night safari in the dark. Wow, that would be amazing. That's a new experience, yes? Exactly. <laughs> Never done that before. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. One thing worth noting is that there are two alternative ways of experiencing a Kenya safari, national parks and conservancies. A national park like Samburu and Masamara is managed by the government, and there's a strict rule on what time you can drive inside the park, typically from sunrise to sunset. On the other hand, a conservancy like Opajeta is managed privately for the purpose of conservation. And you have more options for activities in a conservancy, like a night game drive or even a guided bushwalk. Okay, so I just checked into my safari tent here at uh, Sweetwater Serena Camp. And uh, again, it's time for a tent tour. Just like yesterday, I have a very luxurious camp. Look around. I have two beds, even though I only need one, and they are big enough. A sitting area, 24-7 Wi-Fi and electricity, sort of a closet, shower, 24-7 hot water, and a toilet. But the best part, you cannot believe it. Let's get outside. Do you see that? That's a black rhino. This is crazy. And on the other side of the water hole, we have a herd of impala and also some buffaloes. Okay, so I know this place has rhinos, but I didn't expect to see one right in front of my room. Oh my god, this is crazy. And today, I've got some other neighbors. You cannot believe this. Giraffes at the water hole.
I was pleasantly surprised by the sheer density of animals here in Upper Jetta. Coming from the drier Samburu savanna environment, where you find small herds every here and there, it was such an eye opener to see larger herds of herbivores of different species grazing together here in Upper Jetta. It's also the place where I had my first encounter with the true queen of savanna, a lioness. Little did I know, in a few moments, we'll truly understand that on these wild plains, the silver lining between life and death is often very thin. An injured zebra, wound still fresh and pink, she tries hard to blend in with the herd, holding on to that last ounce of comfort after a dramatic experience. At the end of the day, wound will heal. Life will go on, and she's still the lucky one. However, we didn't stay for long, because we had a special place to visit. Uh, we started this century in 1993. Mm -hmm. uh, we brought another lady called Jane Kudo. Oh, I know her. Like, she's really famous, right? Uh, like, famous. It's the one who have done almost 40 years doing it for yeah. chimpanzee research. Yeah. Yeah. So she established this sanctuary yeah. here. We had three chimpanzees in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So the government say you need any consultants who can take care of them. Mm -hmm. So all Pejeta say we'll take care of them. Yeah. And then at Jen Kudo, uh, he had like nine. Mm -hmm. group, or he had uh, nine chimpanzees. Yeah. So he put them together and bring here and start making now this area to be famous because in Kenya only I would get the chimpanzee. Yeah. So in Kenya there's no chimpanzee, oh, no. not even in the jungles? In, you also in jungles, you don't know. All are rescued, yeah. Remember some people there, like Congo, they like to eat chimpanzee, like mm -hmm. a meat or whatever. Uh, though when they are killing their mom, they take the young ones uh -huh. and keep them at home like a pet. So this the chimpanzee will rescue them. Do those people actually eat chimpanzees? Yeah, or? fair way. And sell the meat. That's like eating a human. <laughs> yeah. So when you go in the Congo, be a checker yourself there. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is crazy. So, so they, just... they kill the mom, take the young ones, and keep them at home like a pet. The more the chimpanzee grow up, will be aggressive. They start making cages to keep them like this. Uh -huh. To keep chimpanzee inside like that one. So, that's a problem, yeah. Oh, Foko! Foko! So Foko is the oldest chimpanzee. It's how? 40 years old, 41 40? years. Okay, and how long can they live? Uh, 40 to 45, but in here we live up to 50 also. Filippo, <laughs> you yeah. That's an interesting position. Yeah, sure. To maintain one chimpanzee per year is 400,000 Kenya money. 4,000 US dollars. You have to buy food, care the people are caring of them, medicine or whatever, to kill germs or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like you feed them three times a day breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's a rescue cage. Sometimes, uh, for example, or chimpanzee es escape from that explosion, uh -huh. and you are here. We we'll all run inside there and lock ourselves there. Ah, oh, because they can attack you. They can attack you. So chimpanzee, they remember, they know humans, the one who killed their parents mm -hmm. for meat. So they know. 98.6. That's the percentage of DNA we share with our closest relatives to date, chimpanzees. I still cannot believe that people actually hunt them for meat or keep them as pets. At least here in Upper Jetta, they finally found a sanctuary and an opportunity to live their lives like the great apes they are. Chimps are not the only animals that take sanctuary here in Upper Jetta Conservancy. Upper Jetta is also home to a critically endangered animal species, a majestic creature who's fighting for its place of existence on these great plains of Africa. We are coming to meet uh, one of our blind uh, black rhino. Mm -hmm. His name is called Baraka. He's a 26 years old rhino. 
So this rhino, he was not born blind, but there before he was just in the wild. So he turned to fight with another rhino and he lost one eye side out. One eye was completely pulled out in a fight. Oh. Later on, he caught to develop cataract on one eye. And we tried to fix the one who caught infection, but it didn't work. Of course, he's a male. He cannot survive in the wild because of other dominant males. And they can even kill him. We rescued and bring him here. We have had him for the last like uh, 11 years now. In this conservancy, we have 137, 137 black rhinos. This is mm -hmm. the largest black rhino sanctuary in East Africa. Mm -hmm. And at least every month, we have a newly born calf of a black oh. rhino. Yeah, uh, we didn't have any white rhinos before, but right now we have few. We have like uh, 38 in total. We have 38 white rhinos. Mm -hmm. Among 38, uh, two are the last two northern white rhino. Yeah. And that six are southern white rhinos. They are not native to Kenya. None of the white rhinos is native. Natively, the northern white rhinos, they came from northern part of Africa, like mm -hmm. Congo, Sudan, Chad, and western part of Uganda. Okay. So, due to the civil war in their countries, the mm -hmm. number declined, mm -hmm. and the few which were left were being rescued and taken to Czech Republic Zoo, right, yeah. uh, to um, San Diego Zoo in America. Since um, they were no, there were no more breeding going on, mm -hmm. they decided to send back these animals back to their natural habitat, yeah. of which they were supposed to be taken back to their country, but they used Kenya as a nice destination. Yeah because of the instability of uh, insecurity in their country. So the two remaining northern white rhinos, they were actually living in a zoo before they yeah, came uh, here? Yeah, the two remaining, the two were born in a zoo in Czech Republic. Okay. So they actually keep uh, the two remaining northern white rhinos in a designated enclosure. So these are the four northern white rhinos that used to be kept here. Unfortunately, two of them passed away. So now we have Najin, the mother, and the Fatu, the daughter. That is Najin. The Najin. one having a long horn is Najin. And uh, Fatu is the one facing uh, towards the southern white rhino. And uh, I saw Fatu's horn is cut off. Is that intentionally? Yeah, uh, we just dehorned them for their safety purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, these animals sometimes they do fight and we yeah. don't want to cause some injuries to one another. Yeah. So we tend to shoot their horns. Fatu and Southern White Rhino, they are becoming good friends. So sometimes they do collaborate and they fight Nigerian sometimes. So we don't want to have some uh, severe injuries on one another and we mm -hmm. tend to dehold them. But why do you keep a Southern White Rhino here? In so this? the Northern White Rhino, as you look at them, the way they are crazing now, they didn't know how to do it by themselves. When they came here on 20 December 2009, they were being fed with human food. Oh. Like breads, apples, watermelons, carrots and bananas. But right now, look at Najin, she's crazy. She didn't know how to craze or how to do all natural things. So we put Southern White Rhino to be with them, to be a good trainer for them. Okay. She has been caring all along and she has been a yeah. good friend and a good trainer for them. And normally, uh, in the wild, life expectancy can live up to 40 years. But uh, in captivity, they can live to 50 or even up to 60 years in captivity. So, Najin, she's 31, Fatu, she's 20. They were be given a chance to see if they must still breed naturally in the wild. But uh, they have not succeeded and uh, they won't have any chance anymore. So the only hope is to save uh, them through the scientific way in yeah. future fertilization. Before the males died, we managed to collect some semen, two males we had over here. And also there was other semen which was collected at San Diego Zoo and some in Czech Republic. So mm -hmm. there is a lot of sperm count which was collected and preserved. So we are only collecting eggs from the two females and we fertilized the eggs after our collection of so we can't risk using the two remaining females because they have got different issues. The hind leg of Najin is uh, sort of uh, yeah. bending down. She's yeah. not static properly. So no, she yeah. can't support herself to carry the weight of the pregnancy. Yeah. And Fatu, she's still much okay, but she developed uterus problem. Uh -huh. But the goodness, both of the two females, they are still producing good eggs. Okay. So after every five or six months, we harvest uh, eggs from the two. And after harvesting, uh, eggs are being fertilized in Italy. 
So this is something we just never been done before. Uh -huh. uh, we started recently, and yeah. uh, we started last year doing the off-farm pickup, collecting eggs from the females. Right. And um, it has been going on very successfully because we have a total of five embryos of pure northern white rhinos. So they are going to bring it anytime soon when everything gets back to normal. Yeah. And when they got to bring it here, they are going to implant using southern white rhinos to be a surrogate mother. Yeah. Civil unrest, habitation loss, poaching, and trophy hunting. Once roaming the Great Plains of Northern Africa in the numbers of thousands, Northern white rhinos are on the verge of extinction, caused by nothing else but human beings. In parts of the world, superstitious practices believe that rhino horns have medicinal value. However, this completely false belief is based on absolutely no scientific evidence. These horns are essentially made of the same material as fingernails. And it's simply outraging knowing that these creatures are being killed for absolutely nothing. Last to know the white trainer is a clear symbol of uh, what extinction means. And uh, because these animals they are not able to speak for themselves, we act as their voice. We speak on their behalf so that we can uh, try to prevent extinction not to happen anymore. Not only for rhinos but to other different species of animals. Okay, now I'm gonna do something quite unique and really exciting. I'm going on a night game drive. So what that means is we are going to drive out into the wilderness to see the animals in pitch darkness. I've never done something like this. Um, the only comparable thing I've ever done was a night safari in Singapore, but it was a zoo. And here we're in complete wilderness. So really excited to see what's gonna happen. Let's go. Something is going crazy on the tree. Apparently these are parrots going insane. What is this? Okay, so what's really cool about staying in one of these safari camps is uh, at night they have lights on and uh, the herbivores such as water bugs, they love coming here because of the lights, because they feel safer. So now we are on the night safari already. Yes, for two hours we've been hunting with our eyes and the spotlight. <laughs> Great. I love watching National Geographic. However, what you don't see from the documentaries is that most predators are nocturnal by nature. This night game drive was a unique opportunity to experience Africa at its wildest hours. So we just finished the night safari yeah. and uh, we saw some quite amazing stuff like four out of big five. We saw leopard, that's the most amazing part. And uh, lions, one male lion, a bunch of buffaloes, black rhinos. Hopefully tomorrow morning we'll see the elephants. Yeah. The big five. Thank to you complete so much. the big Good five night. and uh, wonderful. Okay, I'm just walking back to my tent and speaking of big five, this is the last big five. Look. Oh my god, so now we've officially completed the entire big five list just in one night within two hours. 
And now I'm ready to sleep because tomorrow morning we're leaving super early to Lake Nakuru. So good night. See you tomorrow.